Before we dive deeper in developing the, the whole layout of this Mars exploration website, I want to quickly show you an interesting new way to reuse GSAP animations throughout the site. I could give this element uh, a combo class and then animate this certain class every time it comes up uh, in the viewport, but then it comes in conflict with the global CSS class I use here on this element. So an interesting new way is that you can give basically every element in, in Webflow, now uh, your own data or your own attribute. And in my case, I want to fade in this title word by word. And now we can go into the interactions panel, click on scroll. And what I like to do is give this the same description like the attribute is. So I now know exactly what this interaction here does in the in the overview panel here. And when we go into the trigger, we now have to change the target from class to attribute, give this the same name data fade in stagger, create this one. And then the value is here now word. And when an element with this attribute comes up, it shouldn't create a scroll animation. It should just trigger an action. And in my case, I just want to play the animation once. And when the element is out of the viewport, you could basically just reset the animation. So it's animating again when you scroll from the bottom to the top, for example. And this is pretty powerful stuff that wasn't possible before with the old interactions. So in my case, I leave it just play once. And when we go to add an action, we can actually use a preset here to create a, the animation faster because here is the stagger fade in. And now we have already set up the opacity here because it should animate from zero and then should go wherever um, the design of the class here is in the Webflow Designer. And then the cool part here is that you can set an offset time, which is the stagger effect. And then you can split it here. And in my case, because the attribute is by word, we now use the word um, split by here. Of course, you could also animate whatever you want here. And this is then saved in this attribute animation. Let's have a look how this animation goes. And for my taste, it's a bit too fast here for this website. So I can maybe go to 1.2 seconds and maybe we can also change this one from power three in to power one in out. And now I have a preset um, attribute I can use on other elements as well. For example, on this headline here, I can give it the same word a value here as an attribute. And if we scroll to the top now, I can hide the Nova AI here for now. So we don't see the, the preloader. And when we then scroll down the side, we see that the title is animating and also the subtitle here, but it could be a bit later. So the visitor is definitely seeing the animation. So when we go back to this title element to interactions, we can actually set this one here in the viewport options. So right now it's when this element here comes up here in the uh, in the bottom of the viewport and we can trigger this maybe 80 percent so now it's triggered when the element is here basically so not here at the bottom when it's here so 20 percent after it's in the viewport so let's toggle the preview again and now it's a bit later and this feels uh, better for me for the, for this uh, kind of animation and the cool part is now that you basically can build a collection of animations for yourself now because we can copy this attribute here go to the uh, copy text. And if we now also use the word animation, it would take a really long time for the copy text to, to be visible. So we can use another one here or create another one. And this one could be not word, but we want to animate or fade in every um, line. And because this attribute is now a different one, the interaction here is no longer there. So we can go to the title and then go to the three dots and duplicate this one then change the name here to line, delete the copy text. And then also here on the attribute, we have to change the value to line. We can basically leave all the other settings. And also here in the um, action, we can change the split by by to, to line. And when we now preview this animation, it's a bit faster and better usable for copy texts. And if we have a button element like this one, this component is actually a real button and it has a text element inside. And the funny part is if we I use an attribute here on this uh, component, for example, also the word a value, and then we go into the preview, it's animating only the text inside, even if I um, use the, the attribute on the parent a button element. So that's quite cool to know, but it's not what we want. In this case, I just want to fade in the whole element itself. So we can create a different animation here, for example, element, 
and then also delete the stagger in the, the name. And to create this animation, we can go to another element, for example, to this chapter title here. And, and then we can do the exact same steps, go to another action, duplicate this one. And this is now the, the fade in, but by for every the whole element. So no stagger, eff stagger effect. And then we ha actually have to delete the whole name here and create a new this one is the element. We can leave everything else. And in the action step, this could actually be just fade in. And we don't want to split text effect and also not the staggering. The title here and also the button element is fading in. And we now gave basically every element a different attribute. But you could also give a, a wrapper diff element the attribute. For example, here the, the animation word. And all the elements inside, if they are text or titles, they have no attributes now, but now if we go into the preview, it's animating every element, if it's a text element, with the word animation. And this is also pretty good to know that you don't have to give every single element this attribute. You could also set this up via the parent element and GSAP is then now looking for child text elements inside.